Are you struggling to chart your career path? Or are you struggling with your career progression? In this episode, we are going to share how to chart your career path based on our experience. The things we wish we knew before we start our career years ago, such as number one, what to consider when choosing a career path. Number two, what should be our main drivers or motivation in considering a career. Number three, understanding the reason of working as a Muslim. Number four is real life example. One of my favorite sharing by the brothers is the story of why changing your career path might be good for you. Come, let's hear it. My name is Abdul Aziz. Here in the Baraka Effect podcast, we intend to inspire communities of high achievers striving for continuous growth and excellence. We try our best to dissect the Quran and the Sunnah and turn it into our unfair advantage to gain success in this world and the hereafter. So, if you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel. Barakallah wa fikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yumiddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. Ahlan wa sahlan. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So insyaAllah our discussion for this week will be charting your career path. Now honestly brothers, I don't know about you but I would have loved to listen to this topic when I was still studying back in university. Back then I had no idea what to do, where to go, what I'm good at, what I'm lousy at. I couldn't even imagine sitting at the office for eight hours a day, man. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, Alhamdulillah, I'm glad we're having this discussion, especially that some of us, and Alhamdulillah, also had some experience working in the corporate environment and different different situations, inshallah. So, to kickstart this discussion, inshallah, we'll start with Brother Amir. So, you chose this topic, chatting your career path. So, maybe you can share with us why you chose this topic. Why is it significant to you? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I think uh, again, uh, it's a, what a pleasure to be uh, among the uh, company of the, of all these brothers. Eh? MashaAllah, it's always something to look forward to on every weekend. Yeah? Absolutely. So, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I think, I think about, about, about working, yeah? I think it's something that, that all of us uh, have to do and, uh, it's, and we do it for different reasons. Yeah? And, and, uh, and uh, one, as a Muslim, yeah, we, we, are, we are told, uh, we, are, we are, as a Muslim, we, we need to find our own sus- uh, seek our own sustenance yeah? uh, as, a, as a command by Allah. So everybody has to go through this. Yeah? But what we want to share with people is some of the, uh, the, suggest- the, the good practices and perhaps learning from the mistakes that we have made in the past yeah? so that, to the benefit of all the viewers, especially young undergraduates as well as uh, people who are mid-career who, who thinks about changing up careers or things like that. Yeah? So, so the, the whole intent of, of, of doing this is uh, we try to give as much input as possible. So hopefully... Uh, uh, by the will of Allah, we will make the best decision uh, for our dunya and akhirat. So that, that was the whole Ameen. intent to, to have Ameen. this. Amin. Yeah, it's very good, mashallah. So Reza, you you initially identified this subject matter, isn't it? So I want to see your perspective. What do you see your interest in this in this subject? Yeah, uh, basically, uh, when I first thought about this topic, um, nowadays you see a lot of um, success stories out there in books, books, uh, social media, um, where you see people who have made it in their career. But what you don't see is what the struggles um, they go through. I mean, you, you ah, see, the, you see the ones for the exceptional cases, um, the ones yeah. who are brilliant, the one who has, let's say, um, let's say exceptional stories. But we rarely get an insight to the average person, how, how they chart their career path, what, what do they experience when they... Uh, uh, complete their studies and what the, the struggles that they go through. So a lot of this, um, I think, uh, would be beneficial for us to share our experiences in regards to learning from each other uh, and um, perhaps fine-tuning our, uh, charting our career, basically. So that was my original thinking behind uh, this uh, specific topic. Yeah, that's fantastic, mashallah. Barakallah feet. 
actually you pointed out something that I've been thinking a lot recently as well. Our society tends to over glorify overnight success stories. Mm-hmm. And they tend to look at the end result. Okay, for example, this guy become CEO in 15 years. This guy become manager in 7 years and they look at that part of it. But like you said, they don't look at the the grinding part of it. How, how, what it takes yeah. to really really get there. And people tend to think this is what I used to think when I was in university. I used to have this mindset like career has this ladder, right? You just have to grind your way up and inshallah you'll get there. Yeah. But now after working like about more than 10 years, I realized that that's not how it works at all, man. Sometimes you got to go sideways. Sometimes you got to go down. Sometimes you got to... No, no, no. Moonwalk. Yes. You got to moonwalk. <laughs> you think you're going forward, but actually people are seeing you're going backwards. <laughs> and exactly. I realized that that's what makes a fulfilling life. And, and, and in reality, that's what your career is as a whole. And you don't live in a vacuum. There are many other aspects to it, which you don't necessarily see when you're studying. You think that when you're studying engineering, your, your works are revolving around that. When in reality, it makes up a, a fraction of what you actually do in your day-to-day lives. So I think this is a good inter- su- subject because personally for me, I feel that for where I am right now, I have a, a little bit of experience, but I'm not a senior senior. So, And I'm also at risk of meeting the dreaded Midlife crisis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are all in the same boat, Aki. <laughs> we probably are, right? <laughs> so we probably have to be very intentional about this. But actually, also before before we really get started in the uh, discussion, I also wanted to know from Shami's point of view. So Shami, I believe you graduated in food technology and you started a bit on this. So I, I wanted to know what what do you feel? What do you want to know? What, what what's what's curious to you when it comes to the subject of charting your career path? Okay, uh, so when I was, I finished my degree in food science and technology, Alhamdulillah, so I had a few things in mind, all right? Uh, so so I'm, uh, I'm trying to go back to my way of thinking back then. So what I was uh, actually trying to achieve was, you know, to, to get a stable job, you know, that, that something, uh, a job that pays well. Mm. Yeah, but... Uh, of course, the job, uh, the job that pays well, and also I would have uh, some sort of, a, you know, fulfillment, and I would feel comfortable with the work working environment and uh, so on and so forth. Um, so when I joined this company, it was totally different with, to to what I have expected, uh-huh. and yeah, because I I have no prior experiences in working and also I you know one of my mistakes is that I did not actually uh, seek um, help or you know question those who are more senior than I was Uh, so I had this uh, like a very um, how do you say this like uh, I imagine working to be something you know very uh, very cool and you know very a very adult, you know. I uh, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even yeah. know what adult, uh, what, what what to be an adult means, you know. Uh, right. Back then, so I was uh, I was stuck in this fantasy. I was stuck in this fantasy, ah. but when I uh, work in in the company, subhanallah, I felt like uh, uh, everything that I know and I hold hold on to, you know, it just disappear, poof, just like that. Because, wow! Uh, yeah, <laughs> that sounds very dramatic, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's a bit uh, it's a bit dramatic. Wow! <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, I had to I had to learn a lot of skills that I have never thought that I would learn in my life. You know, mm. such as you know uh, clerical work, you know stuff like that, and also to to brainstorm because I uh, because during my university days. I we don't usually brainstorm that much, uh, because oh really oh, yeah wow. yeah 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 because you know why because we we usually be we we usually will be in labs right so oh, okay I see yeah so there are all there there are manuals that we need to follow so you can't stray away from that manual so you can't really put your ideas into the thing ah, yeah. if you ask your isn't it yeah oh, you, you ask your lecturers ah. you ask your lecturers they will say oh just follow uh. Okay, uh, you know, okay, this one you can, you just follow, just sami na wa ta'na lah. Right, right, right. right. Uh, and, just I hear and I, listen, I obey, yeah. Yeah, I hear, yes. Uh, it means I hear 
uh, we listen and we obey. That's all. So uh, when I was in uh, the company, I had to I had to uh, force myself to have this paradigm shift, sort of. So I I need to be more creative and you know uh, try to think uh, like like the others and also try to think outside of the box. So I think uh, it uh, in a way it it displaces me. It dis- displaced me from my comfort zone. Wow, and awesome. uh, but uh, there, there are pros and cons, obviously. Uh, but the pros, I think, is uh, much more. Although the, the the cons are, uh, you know, they are there. You can you can do you you can do away with it. Sure. Yeah. So so that is from my uh, uh, that, that is my experience in the working culture and the working environment. And it uh, in it uh in it extended for only uh for less than an, uh, for less than a year before oh, I, got, all, I uh, before I get I got accepted to to further my studies. So uh, yeah. Okay, mashallah. mashallah. Yeah, I love that actually. Uh, people say you got to think out of the box, but here I am thinking I didn't, I wasn't aware there was a box in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> it wasn't a box. It was just like a beast. <laughs> yeah, totally. Mashallah. Before That's think very good. out of the box, you need to know the box. Yeah. Yeah, you need to recognize <laughs> the box in the first place, right? Yeah. So that's a very good point, right? Mashallah. And I was there, uh, and 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 there I was, uh, being in that environment. I I didn't know. I didn't even know there was a box. You know. So yeah. <laughs> until they showed me, well, what is this? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like somebody yeah, opened yeah, the screen, yeah. isn't it? Like open the hijab. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now I see. Yeah. <laughs> so that's very good. It was a triangle. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so very good, inshallah. So let's start our discussion with a little bit of grounding now, and which is understanding what's the primary reason we work as Muslims. So perhaps uh, Amir, you want to start this discussion off? Yeah. Okay. So I think I think having having some some. Uh, Drivers in in, in in your decision it helps build up some performance. Yeah, so for instance, some in the past, some people say they, they might work because I uh, because I'm I'm 21 years old, I have to work. So just passing it's a another phase in life, life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So right. those kind of things, uh, you might you might be working, you might earn something, but there's no drive, there's no motivation to excel in in mm. uh, if you're having that kind of mindset. Yeah, so you, you gotta have some uh, some drivers. Uh, why you choose a particular uh, career path? Yeah. So I think the, the the but the main thing that you when you when you choose this uh, uh, a career first of all uh, I like to put it think what what is halal first yeah? what 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 work is halal so mm. for instance so, so that that helps you to to narrow down your your career choices yeah so for instance that uh, you 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 try not to be in uh, things which directly involve in uh, alcohol for instance or or illicit activities like uh, when mm. uh, and also maybe things like that that have direct uh, uh, prohibitions like like riba interest yeah. Uh, mm. Or maybe uh, excessive entertainment industry. So, so in that, uh, by doing that, you already perhaps filter out maybe thirty percent of of potential work. Yeah, which mm, is uh, true. yeah. Even though yeah, so uh, so, so, so basically so, setting a boundary behind before you make a the further step of your decision. That's right. You uh, have the box. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, Defining okay. your box. Defining your box. Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. Uh, then after that, of course, you you well, you know. Uh, I mean, once you have some drive. Then, then, you, then you look further for that drive. What is it? Is it a financial uh, motivation? Is it a family? Is it a passion? Is it uh, some uh, a family a family drive of some uh, family uh, uh, commitment? Is it something for a higher noble cause? Yeah, yeah. Because mm. what yeah. I see, like for instance, like uh, uh, like in the Qayyum one once mentioned, like uh, he see, he kind of like uh, tell like, the best two jobs ever. So he said two the two of the best jobs is one is something that heals the the soul, which is a teacher. Mm. Or a religious teacher, Shama. and the second, the second best job is the people who heals the body, which is doctor, nurse, medical people who work in the medical line. So, so that, that's just uh, one opinion from a from, from a from a scholar on on wow. yeah. him, What are the two best jobs? Yeah. Oh wow! Shama. So basically, something that provides benefit to others. If I can summarize yeah, it, yeah, mashallah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, actually, sure. it's interesting you said that because even when you don't factor in religion, so of course, religion has to be the primary one, but even if you don't take that in, there has to be strong motivators on why you even engage in that career in the first place. So mm-hmm. I like to bring one very important motivator, which is to serve others, to add value in others. Serve, yeah. So even if you don't have the issue of, if you don't, you don't have that in religious intent, by virtue of working in medicine, that alone is saving lives. And a lot of people, that's enough sometimes to give them the passion to do, to go through the hard things, the difficulties of university, of the housemanship and so on and so forth. 
and including us as well. If we don't have, we don't link it to that big motivational picture, it's mm-hmm. going to be very easy to be burned out by whatever task that you're told to do. And so, for example, when we work for a government organization, you mm-hmm. have to have that intent that somehow this is helping our nation. So for me, mm-hmm. for example, mm-hmm. one of the things I'm very grateful for is that I get a chance to work in a national oil company. And they were very strongly pushing out the message to its employees that it's an amana. You're taking care of a national resource and we are contributing a significant portion of the national GDP. So you're actually paying for the schools, the prisons, mm-hmm. the police. So mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a very good motivator to realize that, oh, wow, this is something very important. And if people don't get in touch with that, it's very easy to get burnt out and feel Mashallah. demotivated at work. Mashallah. But we have oh. something even better than that, which is our purpose in life. Masha'Allah, so, Masha'Allah. And uh, it's very important to note, uh, when Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn and mankind except to worship me. So we have to understand how our career choice, how even the choice to work in the first place links to that big picture of Tawheed, to worship Allah alone. And one of the aspects is we have to be very intentional is that we're seeking halal rizq, as I uh, highlighted, to seek something which is allowed in Sharia to provide for ourselves so we can effectively conduct our job as people who worship Allah. At the very least, that has to be there. So that does tie a lot to the to the question of niat, right? Maybe just at a glance, right? Yeah. Because so, so, sometimes when 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 you have like a uh, like the scholars mentioned Ibn Uthaim, he said like uh, I think I think uh, Brother Shami highlighted this like, like like people who have knowledge, yeah, they make their daily life become ibadah only in the matter of, by the matter of niat. Ah. Yeah. By having the correct niat. Having the correct niat, it elevates your da- your daily routine into into the level of ibadah. So. Yeah. Sahih, sahih. Yeah, so something like driving a car can be an ibadah if that's a means to something bigger. That's right, that's right. So mm-hmm. even for you to commute to work, to punch in, to switch on your laptop, if you do this with that big picture intent, that can be an act of ibadah which is rewarded by Allah. But you got you to put that as your primary goal. So for instance, like, an example, like, for instance, mm. uh, okay, uh, someone who, who, a doctor, yeah, uh, who saved a life, yeah? so if, if his intention is just to save a life, then uh, he get all the reward in this world, but maybe he doesn't we'll get that reward life. in the next life, right? Yeah. But if he, if he, yeah, if he is, yeah. if his main intention is to, because Allah commanded you to save a, a life whenever it's possible, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that to to seek Allah's pleasure. So that's number one. So this seems like if you're like let's say you're, if you're an imam in a masjid which is being paid, yeah. So but if if your reason that you do the, you lead the prayer is because I get my monthly salary, then uh, it's defeating the purpose. But if your number one uh, niat when you work as an imam, is I'm called I, I'm I, I'm fulfilling Allah's command, I'm seeking Allah's pleasure, mm. and then then it becomes an ibadah, right? So like a it's like a paradigm shift basically when you place your niat in in the first as a foundation. Whatever you do after that, uh, of course, if it's uh, you know within the boundaries of the deen, then it will be a set a, a, a an ibadah. And it not only it, it, it firstly it will benefit you for the akhirah, which is our main goal, basically for what we are created to be, you know, in, in this dunya. Mashallah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, after after we know that um, the career we, we need to give sustenance to our family, we know that mm-hmm. um, the drivers are I think it's good to find a company or a job job place that it's easy to to practice our deen, right? Ah, very mm. important, yeah. That's right, right. that's right. Yeah, but but some, somehow, there are some people that I think it's hard for them because they are living in maybe in US or UK. In the West, so, yeah. Mm. How, yeah. yeah. What, what you should consider, right? Like, yeah, I, I, this kind of thing, like, uh, something happened, like, I mean, a lot of people sometimes, they, they, they got a, an idea of what's their dream job, yeah? But they don't seek a lot of advice on on, on their reality of, of working in yes. such organization, yeah? Yes. So they think, oh, it's all rosy from, from, the, from the pamphlet, from the internet advertisement. But then, if you, uh, but then essentially, it's more than that. It's, it's more behind behind the curtains to that. Like, uh, in right. terms of uh, maybe the working culture, it's, it's, it's uh, demanding, borderline toxic. You, you don't know. Right. So, yeah. uh, so do, yeah. you get this, uh, the best if you can ask someone who's already working in that organization that they'll be the best, right? Right. Yeah. Mm. You know, the challenge that I found is that sometimes these challenges, especially when it comes to religious tolerances and even when it comes to whether your employer allows you to go and pray salah, 
you don't actually know until you join. That's the challenge. So a lot of, uh, even people think that it's a challenge in the West, but I actually got to know that there are some Malaysian companies, even though we live in a majority Muslim country, there are some employers who still are very unempathetic to allow their employ employees to even take a five minute break to pray. They can take a five minute for a smoke, but they cannot take five minutes to pray. So That's ridiculous. Know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Right. But this is a challenge. And so, yeah, I think what Ame advice is a very good point. You have to try and at least make an effort to find out how it's like inside. But at the end of the day, you can only do your best. And sometimes when you enter the situation, then you find out the challenges inside. And then you have to be really honest with yourself. Is this something I can live with or, or something I cannot? And if it's something that threatens your overall purpose in life, then it doesn't serve your purpose anymore. And you have to be, have that courage to say no. This is where things get very, very tricky. So let's say like Ame says, uh, you found your dream job, rosy job, you got this big Fortune 500 company, but they don't let you pray Zohor or Asar. Wow. Oh, then you're going to make the choice now. You can say, Ma, I, I have to quit the job because I can't be a good Muslim. Trust me, you'll get a lot of criticism from the whole world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. And it's a very tough decision. And so as the thing is, it always comes back to intention you really have to get in touch with what you really want to achieve in life. And it's really important for us to not remember one thing. Your job is not permanent. It doesn't define who you are. When you are defining yourself as a Muslim, you have to think your job as something that supports your life. It's a utility. It's not what defines you. And even if you think about it from a dunya perspective, I actually got this from a course from Harvard Managed Mentor. It tries to remind us, and this course is about career management. It says, no job is permanent. Think of even, each position. Yeah. <laughs> even sorry, though I, in I, the document you 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 receive a letter of uh, the letter of appointment of your of your job, they say permanent staff. Permanent staff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> permanent. That's true. That's true. That's true. The mindset is that it's permanent, but it's permanent yeah. from a HR point of view. How they categorize yeah. you in the employment contractual <laughs> perspective, <laughs> from contractual perspectives, yeah. <laughs> but the advice is very good. It says. You think of each position as a stepping stone to your next opportunity. Yeah, I find that a very good mindset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So where you are right now, whether you're having fun or you're struggling in it, just think of it as this will pass one day. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe two years, three years. Allah wa'alam. And if you think about it that way, it's important that you don't get too attached if you're demotiv- if you're you're loving the job, and you also <laughs> don't get too demotiv- if you too demotivated if you're struggling in it. So I, I, that, that mindset is important when we talk about work as ibadah is to remember that this is not something that's going to stick with you forever. It doesn't have to define who you are. Then you need to change. This is so like let's, putting it in its right place, you know. Um, some people, let's say, place too much importance in their work that it becomes their life purpose, you know. But yeah, um, uh, when we step back and we look at the whole reality of it, what is our life purpose basically? And Uh, like uh, Akif Aisa mentioned, the job should be a means to another, uh, to something that you want to get to, which uh, for us Muslims is uh, our akhirah, you know, this is the most important thing for us. So basically, mm. when you know what you are def- your definition of purpose is, then you know how where to put things in the right place, basically. So the right priorities. Right priorities. Sahih. Some, but something about this uh, demotivation, yeah? Like a... Uh, The, what, what, some things that I, I uh, in my in my opinion, uh, how to how to tackle the motivation sometimes, uh, when you want to choose a job, yeah, make sure you do at least these two things. Like, yeah, make sure you do find a job that you're passionate about it, that you're willing to take all the whatever challenges that comes your way. Or second, make sure you choose a job that you're actually good at it. Mm. So, if, if, if there's if if the situation gets very challenging, at least you can deliver the the bare minimum. Yeah, sometimes right. something that yeah. you're good at is not our passion, right? That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes, I mean, I guess most of the time, I guess from a human perspective, um, what you are passionate about will be uh, more often than not will be something that you will be good at because you like to do that thing and you you love it so much that it becomes not like a job anymore. It becomes something that you love to do. So it it becomes naturally a good. Uh, your performance will naturally elevate. From there, you know, so it's a good place to start, I guess. Passion is a good place to to start in, yep, in yeah, finding your purpose. But passion can be a lot of things. Like some people they choose yeah, their job I, I, for because of adrenaline. Mm, 
a particular job that gives you so much thrill, so much like challenges, adventures. Ah, I'm gonna go this like. So yeah, passion yeah, can be yeah, yeah. passion to learn new things, passion to <laughs> explore yeah. new things, passion to put yourself in such discomfort. Right. <laughs> a lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of things define passion. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually, really I, I it's good that you mentioned that. I actually read a very good article about this. I heard a good podcast conversation on career management. So we we always have to consider three main spheres: interest, value, and skill. So interest is what you're passionate about. Skill is what you're good at, and third one is the value. Now, value. Let, let's let's just break this down a little bit. What does value mean? Value can mean different things for different people. So if value, if money is important for you, then that's something that you need to consider. But sometimes it can be in terms of the knowledge that you gain from the the job itself, and it can also mean what value you can give. Ah, this mm. is important mm. because for some people, you see, when you talk about the purpose, for example, when that's why some people now now to work in a non-profit organization NGO is a choice. Mm. Sometimes when you work in NGOs, you don't necessarily get a high-paying career ladder progression, but you get fulfillment in terms of the value you can add. And that's what you're passionate about. So that that can also be something that's uh, very important. So when you get to overlap all three of these, this is where this is what uh, it's interesting. They they call it the signature strengths. And it's interesting when signature I read strength. this book. Uh, I read this book, uh, Good to Great. One of the I'm quoting this book a lot. So, <laughs> one inshallah, of the, must be a good book, of, huh? <laughs> inshallah, <laughs> probably a great book. <laughs> yeah, inshallah. So one of the characteristics of good to great companies, they have this thing called the Hedgehog Rule. So what is a hedgehog? So they compare a hedgehog and a fox. So what's a fox? What what's the impression you get out of a fox? These guys are smart, right? Cunning, the sly, agile, mm. cunning, sly. Mm. So what does a fox do? A fox he looks at what you do and say, ah, "I can do better than you." So he'll compete with you. Now a hedgehog is like, "I don't have that many skills. If I meet this, I will just crawl and my spikes will protect me. I'm good at that. I'm not going to pretend to be something else." So these mm. good to great companies are like that. They know the skills that they have. And so these are the three spheres that they operate in. It operates in the same thing: what they are passionate about. So these companies are very clear about them being passionate about what they want to deliver. And number two is what you can be best in class. This is what you call the skill: what you're good at. So what you can be best in class in. And number three: so when we talk about value, so when, in the context of these good to great companies, they are the what are your cash generators? So you may be passionate about something, you may be good at it, but you cannot su- sustain a living from it. So that's also mm. something you have to balance. Hmm. But what that, a lot of people tend to do is they look at the value side, how, what gives me good pay, interest, passion, meh. You know, <laughs> that can come later. <laughs> yeah, that can yeah. come later. <laughs> and then they are but always burn out when they. And then they get burned out. Oh, nice yeah. burn out. Yeah, betul. That's right. Mm, and, and I think it's very important to note. Ah, huh? this is something that's not constant. As human beings, we grow, we develop, our skills evolve. Our interests also evolve, yeah, ikhwan. You know, yeah, <laughs> we may like right, something right. today, tomorrow something else. That's why it's a hadith that says our hearts are in the fingers of our Rahman. One day, if Allah wants to keep our hearts steadfast, He'll keep it steadfast. You want to leave it yeah, astray, yeah. go astray. Yes. So one day you will like this. One day, you might think as a graduate, I'm I love simulation work. For example, if you're an engineer, <laughs> I love simulation work. Then yeah, after a while, two years, eh, it's not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> First day, yay! I'm doing simulation work. Day yeah. te- second year, yay! I'm doing simulation work. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's the thing. Like like sometimes when you want to uh, when you want to start this uh, uh pro- thinking process of, of what career to choose, I think you also need to be honest with yourself, right? But you need to understand yes. what sort of constraint. That you have, mm, yeah? yeah. It can be, yeah. it can be mobility constraint. It can be mm-hmm. family constraint. Uh, it can be a lot of things, yeah. But you got to be honest with yourself because if you don't address that question upfront, it's gonna be more. It's gonna get tougher by the day. Oh, you mean mm. you? We need to know where we are right now, right? Yeah, mm. where where you are. What, what you know yourself better. Yeah. Like for instance, there are jobs that allows that tells you, even though it's not safe, to be awake 24 hours. I can't do this, mm. but mm-hmm. but sometimes you just I right. can do this right? without being honest with yourself. Then later you're in that in that situation. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> at the same time, right? Um, sometimes um, putting myself back in my shoes when I was a student, I don't necessarily know what all these three mean to me. You know, like it's still up in the air, and you basically yeah. it's very blur, and uh, you know, you don't really know. Yeah, yeah. You don't have a handle on what uh, the things that you really want. So yeah, this yeah. is something also is a dilemma for most uh, graduates, I believe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, how would you advise 
someone who deals who are dealing with these problems yeah like um like what we, we have discussed before you mean like how, a suggestion uh, how to decide yeah, suggestions how how to what what is the process on of, of making mm. yeah suggestion yeah. of yeah. the decision making process you know in making a career career decision I think, uh, I think like, like when, you, when you consider when you want to consider like a progress like I mean a career right? you, sometimes you you think about the the more the more the more direct one for instance you talk about the uh, your personal aspiration your career progression mm. uh, financial planning but you also need to think of like things like uh, uh, what can I, uh, backup plan uh, exit plan yeah, yeah. if things don't work out your your way uh, what, do you have any exit plan for instance if I need to change career midway so things yeah. like that yeah Uh, and also like uh, and you need to understand the the kind of industry that you need to come in for instance if you're in oil and gas there'll be a cyclic downturn so how mm. how should I how should I face or should, what sort of planning should I make in preparation for that downturn so those are the backup plan those uh, exit plan redundancy plan you should also need to think upfront. Mm, yeah oh, sure. okay. actually I may highlight something which I, I'm a very strong believer in which is self-awareness we need to know ourselves what we are good in and what we're not particularly good at. And it's important to note that what we are not good at, we can learn actually. Mm-hmm. And when we say what we're not good, what we're good at and what we're not good at, a lot of people like to focus on the technical aspects of the job. So maybe it's calculation work or it's the technical aspects of maybe as an accountant, it's those specific skills. But there are many other skills which are absolutely necessary in the corporate world. People skills... This is something that people neglect all the time. Emotional yeah. intelligence. Yes, yes. But it's so important no matter where you go. So, and even mm-hmm. under EQ as well, there are actually many different skills which you need to develop. And where you are, where you have your strengths, you need to build on the strengths. So that's very important. One of the, I, I noticed a lot of career advice, people say is, you tend to need to focus more on your strengths and not so much on improving your weaknesses. Now, whether I agree or not, that's 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 an that's another discussion. But the the point is, when you want to put yourself out in your CV, you want to highlight what you're particularly good at, where you can add value to the people who are going to hire you, and where you see a fit in where you where you are right now at this present point of time, which can change. Now, let's let's talk about that. Like, don't focus too much on your weaknesses. Now, I slightly disagree with this in a sense because if your weaknesses are so negative that it can it can even outdo the good of your strengths. Uh, this is very yeah. important. So for example, let's say you're good at brainstorming, like Shami mentioned. Let's, good, let's yeah. say you're good at discussing and bringing ideas together. But you're lousy with dealing with difficult people. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're I impatient. With, huh? <laughs> impatient. Yeah, you're impatient with yeah, difficult people. How are you going to brainstorm? <laughs> uh, that's true. That's, yeah. How are you going to bring it? Yeah. So you have to be very self-aware. And this self-awareness has to come on a lot of different things. And also actually, one of the things that people don't see is you have to also ask yourself, are you a kind of guy who likes to work in solo or in teams? Because what I've noticed is we even within my own organization, even the same position in different departments, they tend to work differently. So in some mm. teams, some some departments, they have to work as a team. You have to bring ideas together. You have to exchange. You have to give feedback. But some, the same position in different environment, they work in solo. And so you have to mm. ask yourself whether that's something you like. And whether you are an indoor or outdoor person, like Amir said, with some people, you like the, the, the risk part. Some people, they prefer the, the indoors. Uh, they like the adventure aspect. <laughs> and you try to look for it. And you see, the thing is, it's an iterative, iterative process try to find out those job positions that you're looking for. What are the requirements? What are the skills that apply the most? So that's number one. And see whether you fit or not. So that's number one. But number two, there are always informal sides to it. See, on paper, you might think that you'll be doing task A, B, C, but in practice, 70% of the time, you're doing something else. Ah, this is something you need to find out. And so, just to answer, I think Shami asked, how do you resolve this problem? For example, hmm. one of the dilemmas that I, I, I feel for a fresh graduate Sometimes you just got to take what you have. You don't have the luxury of choice. Yeah, people are like, oh, I prefer this industry. You know yeah, what? You I'll have take to whatever. compete with people, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, the job market's really tough, right? Especially yeah. as we speak right now in 2020 with the uh, job market's been really, really, really challenging. So people yeah, are people like... people have degrees. Most yeah. people have degrees. We have to compete with the uh, people who have master's. PhD experience. Yeah. Oh, that's right. yeah. That's right. And that can be the general rule for everything, not only just 
you know, in, in finding the perfect job for you. In fact, I asked my dad this morning, like, uh, what are the criteria that, uh, you know, uh, criteria that should be considered in choosing a career? So among other things, he mentioned that um, why he chose to uh, to stay to, to to learn surveying, right? Land surveying instead of engineering. So he said to me, uh, he said to me, oh, because uh, diploma in engineering, but no, it's full already. So his his, <laughs> okay. uh, his lecturer wow. said, yeah, his lecturer, uh, mind you, his, his lecturer suggested to him, not his, oh. it's, it's not his choice. His uh, his lecturer said. Oh, why don't you take land survey lah? Why don't you take land survey? So right. he said, okay, no problem lah. So he took land survey not knowing what it is. <laughs> and uh. and uh, after a year, after about a year, he 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 found it to be, you know, suitable to his, uh, to, to, yeah, to himself. Uh, he he, feel, he felt, he felt comfortable with it. So mm, alhamdulillah, so he is a surveyor now <laughs> uh, because <laughs> of the choice that was made by his lecturer for him. But, but that's reality of life, right? Mashallah. That's actually yeah, that's the, that's yeah. the reality. Like, sometimes you like some because sometimes Allah give you uh, the risky yeah. to to go to 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 uh, by giving you the your dream job. Sometimes He doesn't, yeah. Of course, but it's all it's all good out of it, yeah. Of and course. and uh, and maybe most of you have seen it, like uh, people who who land their dream job only yeah. in the in ten years down the road they hate it big time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and people oh, yeah, who have seen true. didn't get the dream job. In fact, they need to do something. Different from their passion, different from what they study, yeah. and later on they become really good at it. They, they actually love it. They taught people on 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 mm. joining the same yeah. career as what they have. This is all uh, from uh, Qadar Allah, right? Yeah. But, but then, yeah. all these things, yeah, do not do not rush in making your decision, right? Like, I think, ah, uh, yeah. seek advice on uh, understand the job, the nature of the job. Seek advice if you can from people who had worked in that industry or. Uh, people who are outside industry, what are their opinions to that? Yeah, but but yeah. You know, something nice about this religion, yeah, it's it's after you make all that assumption, the conclusion to yourself, yeah, there's this room of istikhara, which I think istikhara, it's a really yeah. big tool for, for, for us, yeah, yeah. yeah? Like Mashallah. you seek Allah, that Allah, that if whatever you've decided for yourself yeah, that you want to do is best for you, then Allah make it easy for you to get it, and if it's not, you you seek Allah to make you content with whatever you got. Mashallah, that that gives you like so much. Uh, Good thought in Allah, like like for instance, yeah, subhanallah. it's like like a good faith in Allah. Yep. Something good or so, something that turns out your way or not your way, you always have good faith for it, and you always think of the positive that comes out from it. Yeah, one rule. Yeah, there's a there's an aspect of the du'a right that says uh, if it's not yeah. good for me and my religion, make it like put it as far away yeah. from me as possible. And so mm-hmm. if it doesn't happen, you have that confidence that Allah knows what's best for me. I thought it's good, but. What to do? Yeah, what to do? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the thing is, that people think istikhara is all about marriage. You know, the word, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the default <laughs> <only> understanding. People <laughs> <huh? laughs> you know, get married, istikhara, right? <laughs> but in reality, how the righteous predecessors used to practice this is even things as small as writing a hadith in a book. I believe it was Imam Bukhari who used to do this. Imam Bukhari, every hadith, yeah. he would, yes, Bukhari, mashallah, yes. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, every yeah, hadith, yeah. thousands of those. Every hadith before he writes it down, he has to pray istikhara. Now you and I thinking, wait, what are you thinking? Are you kidding me? This is a Confirm righteous act, right? <laughs> yeah, just just do it, right? And then, and then the mm. six thousand, a few thousand hadith to do it, right? Man. But he does it. It's not, Inshallah. and it's not just about marriage. And in reality, we make so many choices in our careers. And if we don't, if we neglect that aspect of tawakul, trust in Allah, then you may not have the blessing, the barakah from it. So it's very important mm. to, to remind ourselves. But also, like Inshallah. when you make istikhara, like whatever, like one thing, like the companion, the predecessor does it. They own up their, to their action, yeah. They own up. Ah, they take accountability yes. to what action they take. I uh, mean, whatever yeah. action they have, they have decided on to do, they take accountability to that. They own it. So, yeah. if something good out of it, they make shukur. If something bad out of it, they make sabar. But they never ever uh, blame it on uh, on takdir on on things. They, they don't mm. blame it. Yeah? They they take full uh, responsibility of it. Right. If I yeah. want to bring that to a practical level, that means you don't blame the department, you don't blame the working culture, you don't blame the backstabbers in the office. You need to own up to the decisions that you make. Sure, there are external things that will bring you challenges, but at the same time, you have to focus on what you can do about it. And so, for example, I'm trying to bring it back to the question, okay, you start in a job not knowing what it is. You just take whatever you got. And then you have to be conscious about what's good about it, what's bad about it, what can I learn from it. Ah, uh, this is important. Mm-hmm. No matter where you are, there's always something you can learn. Be very intentional about what you want to learn from this 
So when you think about, let's say, in your current job now, this is what I always like to do. If I were to write my job right now in a future CV, if future me was writing about my job now, what would I say I gain from this job? Ah, you have to ask yourself that. And because those skills will come into play sometime, you don't know when. And so that's very important. Number two, do your best in whatever you do. Uh, this is very, very important. So you may, like, like Shami highlighted, it's a very good point. I don't realize that land surveying is something I'm, I, I can even do in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to be honest with you, uh, like when I started working as a chemical engineer in, in our company, I felt I was not the right fit. I had this thing called, I learned later, it's called the imposter syndrome. I thought like, uh-huh. I don't belong here, man. These guys, these juniors, they're brilliant. They're doing the simulation work. They're killing it. They're releasing reports left, right and center. I don't even know how to do basic things. And so I felt very, not so happy with my job. I didn't feel the passion for it. So I actually considered quitting actually. But after some time, I thought, okay, you know what? I'm just going to give it a certain time. I'm going to go all out. I'm going to ask for as much help as possible. Go and just be this annoying student. Get people to teach me. <laughs> and then hmm. After a sure. while, I got pretty good at it. Not, not say good. I'm, I'm less lousy than I was. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but the thing is, I realized when you're less lousy at something, you actually start to enjoy it. And then mm-hmm. something which was zero passion, I loved it because then I realized that one of the passions that I didn't realize I had was I love to teach people. So when I learn something new, I like to just practice it. Hey bro, kata tak aku belajar. You know, I learned this thing that I will, I will teach them. And then, wow, I found a new passion in a way that I absolutely didn't see coming. It's absolutely not relevant to engineering. Mashallah. I think those things that like, you don't see actually. And after mm-hmm. some time, having the self-awareness is very, very important. Yeah, one one ayah come to comes to mind is uh, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Quran, "Wasa an wasa an takrahu shay'an, wahua khairul lakum. Wasa an takrahu shay'an, wahua wasa an tuhibu shay'an, wahua sharul lakum." Subhanallah. Mm. Like we 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 might not mm. know uh, until we, we we actually do it, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Mashallah. And I think I want to advise also, it's uh, important for us to seek feedback from people. Now, yeah. I know when I say feedback, everyone's like, nah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not me. <laughs> not me <yeah. laughs> But it's so important. I have a lot of life lessons that I took, I got from getting feedback from others. And sometimes what we are good at, we're not aware we're good at it. And sometimes what, what we're yeah. not good at, we're also not aware. So mm. one example, one of my bosses, my ex-bosses, he used to say, Okay, he used to give me this appreciative feedback. He says, okay, one thing I like about you is that you can bring very difficult concepts and explain it and simplify it to people. And when he said that, I was like, really? That's a skill? For <laughs> 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 one, that, yeah. I didn't know it was a skill. And number two, I didn't even know I was good at it because, because this was his perception. And then when he said that, I read up about it and realized that this is a super important life skill. Steve Jobs does this. All these mm-hmm. technical people, these, these tech guys, that's a brilliant skill to have. This mastery. Mashallah. Mashallah. Stein used yeah. to have this quote. I don't know if you heard, heard this quote. He said, if you cannot understand it in a simple terms, it means you haven't understand enough. That's yeah. what Einstein used to say. Einstein used to say it, yeah. And then so, when I... So, re- yeah. yeah. So, okay. Do you mean that... So, for example, I don't have any plan for my my career. I just, I just graduate as an engineer. So... What if I don't have any any plan for my career? I mean, the roadmap. I um, mm. would would I say is is it should 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 we have a starting point first? We have mm. just take anything which uh, w- what we have offered, right? To have look, a look starting drivers, point, or you look for for what motivates you? What motivates you to work? Like uh, your passion, mm. or uh, or maybe something you're good at. You know? Let's say you have mm-hmm. completely no. Uh, you have you, you're uns, uncertain about a lot of things, yeah? including your yeah. interest. You're not so maybe <laughs> think of like a uh, five years down the road. I, I want to get uh, perhaps start a family. Things like this. I want to buy a house. Mm-hmm. So uh, these are the things I need to. I need to. Uh, these are the goals in life. I want to. I want to achieve. So how I, I achieve those goals? I need to uh, save up so much yeah. money out of this, and then then you look. Okay, what sort of jobs can give me this kind of a salary range, and then uh, things like that. That's, So that's if you're completely clueless, what what sort of a work you uh, you you want to go into? But sometimes, yeah, I, I, I think this is a it's a it's a privileged person lah. He he can choose anywhere he wants to go to work. Yeah, but but sometimes people don't have that privilege. Ah, uh, who's that? Yeah, yeah. 
so for instance, someone who has this privilege, oh, I can go into, let's say, I want to, I can go into engineering, I can go into uh, business, right. I can go into accounting. Right. So it's a, right. to me, that's a privileged person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he has, yeah. Uh, he has a lot of uh, options that he can consider. Yeah. yeah, as I see it, we need to have a starting point first, right? Yeah, that's true. To, that's an yeah. interesting question because um, I came across this point in the book called Long View. Uh, basically, they say, stated that a typical career lasts about 45 years and they divided it into three stages. Basically, the first stage is discovering what you are good at and improving the skills. So you necess- mm. don't necessarily uh, must know your life purpose at that point. It's just like Aki Faisal said, it's just picking up uh, the skills that you have along the way and mm-hmm. discovering for yourself what your strengths mm-hmm. are, what your weaknesses are and improving on it and what what your passion is basically and what you find value in uh, and what the concepts that uh, Aki Faisal mentioned. So once you have, uh, let's say in this book, it is defined as 15 years, uh, for example. Years. So... Okay. Don't be in 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 that sense. Don't be afraid to try new things, to discover your your skills. And once you have a good idea about yourself and what you're inclined to, what your passions are, then you will able be able to make a more informed decision and find your sweet spot. In the sense that you will be doing something that is meaningful to you, which you are good at and provides a lot of value. And basically, it will contribute to your fulfillment in your career. And then, um, yeah, the second stage would be finding a speed sweet spot. So building on those expertise. So that's where basically, let's say finding your niche, um, you are you are doing it as an expert. And I once shall. you do that in the next, uh, let's say stage of your life, 15 years, comes the next stage, which is the third stage, which is giving back. So passing back down the knowledge to um, people who wishes to yeah. learn from you, for example. So, in the sense that it's, I think it's quite a good summary. Uh, just to just to uh, separate it into three stages, um, and basically, you don't have to know exactly right off the bat what you um, are supposed to be doing. But it's about discovering yourself and not being afraid to take the steps and to learn uh, about uh, what's what's most beneficial for you basically. So Michelle. yeah, I think that's an interesting point from that book. Yeah, actually the, the point is wherever you are, you have to be very conscious about what you want to learn from it. Mm-hmm. As long as you're growing, mm-hmm. as long as there's something that you can benefit from it, when you can look back from your CV and say, I gained this, inshallah, you can keep further. But there may come a time where you realize that you're not growing. But I, inshallah, usually because some people say, there's a, there's a point of time, this is the trouble that I have sometimes, the dilemma, when do you call it quits and you want to say you want to move on and when do you want to keep on holding on to it, believing that I can get more from this? Oh, when can you say that, oh, this is just me and right now? So that's a, a very challenging point and that you have to come be honest with yourself. And at the end of the day, as I may highlight it, it's important that you keep your trust to Allah. You do it the best that you can because you don't know everything. And if you do the best, and it's important, what I may mention is very, very important. Own up to the decision. If let's say you make a choice to stay, and if it's going to be difficult for you, you have to own up to the difficulties as a consequence of your decision. And if you choose to quit, and then you realize that the grass is not as green on the other side, you have to own up to it. But also on that other side, there are things that you can learn as well. So you have to be very intentional. And as long as you're growing, inshallah, you're heading towards a direction that at least, you know, you're developing as a person. So I have mashallah. Uh, something something about, nice about yeah. uh, Reza's point is not right because the way I perceive it, he put like milestones, yeah. Mm. Because say forty five years uh, is is, a, is is the career that you you will have, yeah. So where you put that milestone, yeah, like uh, maybe ten years is the first milestone, or maybe five years, yeah. Mm-hmm. So so then then at each milestone, what you see, what should you what kind of skills, where should you be pretty much? Yeah? What 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 are the th- next things that you need to look after? What are the next goals that you want to do? So that kind of milestone puts you in a more structured uh, approach in, in your career life. Yeah? So if I, it can be first milestone, I need to be achieve certain positions, certain skills, certain certain financial uh, uh, position. Yeah? If I don't do this, what should I do? Should I continue? Or should I uh, uh, search as elsewhere? Mm. 
you know, there's an interesting point. Uh, this book by, uh, called Built the Last by Jim, Scol- Jim Collins. So he, he studies the companies which have last a long time and have a very good financial performance. One of the things that they, they did, which was very interesting is, this chapter is called, they try a lot of stuff and keep what works. Hmm. They just keep on ah, trying. Yeah, yeah. And actually they like don't that. know. It's interesting. Companies like Sony actually had no product to begin with. They just started with oh. the vision. We want to put Japan on the map. What shall we sell? Oh, Mm. All right, let's think about this. <laughs> so, <laughs> they want to put their values first, their identity, they establish themselves and then figure it out. And that's as individuals, we need to do that as well. Sometimes we think that engineering, as I would graduate in engineering, I think mm. that's what I want to do. But I realize that, oh, maybe it's not for me. But there's an aspect of it. You see, engineering, there's a lot of things. And yep. as Reza highlighted, you can have certain niche skills that other people don't. So, for example, one of the skills that uh, I, I believe, Allah Alam, I believe that I have a slight edge on compared to my peers is that I can do business proposals relatively well. Most process engineers don't think about this, don't, don't have to handle mm. this. And it's strange. Why, why, do I have, why, why do I need this skill? And then I realized that, wow, I, I can apply this in different ways that I, I thought that you know, other people don't have. And also one of the things that I, th- I think Ame highlighted this, sometimes you get assigned with jobs which you don't necessarily like. So I remember being assigned with a task to manage contracts. As disciplined engineers, you don't manage contracts. No. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was very tough. There was a lot of grinding. A lot grinding, of words. Need to read a lot. Yeah. Oh man, what is this? A lot of disputes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> alien <But> I, <laughs> sentences. Yeah, alien sentences. <laughs> but I got through that. And then now looking back, when I do contracts, I have a very strong competency in this, which all of my colleagues don't have. So yeah. like mm. you, you have to be... Don't take this for granted. Everything that you learn, sometimes, for example, I've been assigned to a project which doesn't have to do with my skill group. I had to manage projects, even though I was, uh, we had, we had, I was a project manager for for a team, and then, but and then I I couldn't get progress within my own technical skills. People tell me that you lost, you you rugi, um, it was a loss for you. But I say no, it's not a loss for me. And now that I look back, that's a skill that my other colleagues don't have, and it's valuable for me in life. Yeah. Uh, so that's very interesting sure. so you actually don't know what you're good at until you actually try and you have to look at the individual points and I just share with you I, one of the things I'm very passionate about is I like to teach so I actually considered resigning from an engineer to become a teacher I don't know I don't, I don't think you know that Mashallah. <laughs> I don't think I told you that yeah. within the uh, same organization that. or is it uh, no Malaysia or? Abandoned. It should be a master Jump trainer, ship. bro. Jump ship truth. <laughs> I actually considered that. Master trainer, Allah yeah. alam. Uh. I actually considered that. Because I, I really felt unfulfilled. I couldn't just, I just couldn't do this. This imposter syndrome was really getting to me. But then over time, I realized that I can find opportunities that there are things about teaching, communicating with people, presenting ideas, solving problems, getting message and negotiating. All these things, hey, I, I can do that in some aspects of my work. So what I did is I, I learned this skill called, there's this thing called HAZOP, Hazard and Operability Study. It's a it's it's where you get all these disciplines together. Sounds very engineering. Yeah, very, very engineering, right? <laughs> so I got that certification and I realized what that, what that allowed me to do is I can facilitate discussions. I can get the fulfillment, the passion of teaching without teaching. So uh-huh. that's an interesting... Uh, and, and all of my colleagues yeah. don't have it. In fact, in my entire uh-huh. region, I, I remember the boss declaring, I'm the only one who has that certification. Inshallah. Inshallah. And I realized, oh, that's cool. Because I'm, I'm pretty lousy at other stuff. I can do that one thing. All right. <laughs> I'm yeah. happy with that. that. That's a good point to that. Meaning you, you'll force yourself to, to take up a new skill for the betterment or benefit of others. Yeah, Because ah. that, that career, yeah? Because sometimes people only uh, uh, tie pack that to, to financial, financial gain. Yeah? But sometimes, for instance, if you look like in the past, we have great scholars who make it a career to teach people. Because sometimes, yeah, there's this terms of like Fardu Kifaya, yeah. So right. when you have a, a district that a lot of uh, evil, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, injustice is, is happening, so you, someone needs to step up and teach them this. So sometimes he had ah. to sacrifice a lot of things that he need, yeah, in terms of my, my, all his potential, in terms of my, what sort of potential monetary gains I can get, but. So that I can live, I can fulfill this course so that I elevate the entire the entire society. So, mm. so that's why when we talk about career, teaching can be a good career. Uh, 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 I mean, it doesn't only have to be a, uh, something that that ties only to money. Yeah, it can be a this. So this is something related to noble cause. Yeah, 
So and this is a, some of the career that that has been uh, taken by the, by our scholars, yeah. Yeah, who, who, inshallah, who, inshallah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Also, uh, one of the things I wanted to address is uh, what I've experienced in my my workplace is that there are some people in some conditions they don't perform so well. So they call this the fish out of water syndrome. So they don't perform. But when you put them in different situations, suddenly they become these amazing people. Rock star. They become <laughs> rock stars. And I, I've seen the opposite happen as well. So for example, I had an experience once where we, we had this contractor engineer. She was she was very good at her job. So I recommended her to our boss to, to employ her, to bring her in the team. But when she joined the team, she just couldn't perform. She just, for some reason, the... Yeah, we just couldn't see that same performance in her when she was on the other side. And when I look at it back, it's because when in, in a contractor, they have the systems, they have more predefined jobs and they have more fixed targets for them to achieve. Some people are better at that. Now, when you join the client side, things are a bit more, I would say, you have to General, be a bit more creative. Broad. Yeah. Broad, yeah, you have yeah. to be more resourceful. You have to be more proactive. You have to meet people. You have to deal with uncertainty. Some people just cannot work like this. It's very difficult for them. I've seen this multiple times. And what when I actually recommend them to resign, not because I want to get rid of them, but I tell them this is not the 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 best place for you. Even recently, I had somebody who was a very good software specialist in in, in chemical engineering. So she joined the team as well. So I I, I said, okay, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm glad you joined the team. So now you can you can help us out with the struggles with this very very complex software that I'm I'm always completely confused by. But she joined the company in a position that did not utilize her strengths. It made her a principal engineer. She had to manage projects in a way that suddenly she had to deal with differences of opinion, with arguments, with clients, with different systems. And she basically, they hired her for her strengths. But when she was in the system, her strengths was not utilized at all. So mm, yeah, yeah. Wow. she realized so that she has it's to... Like- it's like a, the same job scope, but then the dynamics of your environment change, and then suddenly you are a different. Uh, you are in a different environment. Yeah, you have to yeah, address right. in a different way. <laughs> yeah, but, but some people they might say that you can develop those skills, you can adapt yourself towards that. But for some people, they feel that it's better to utilize their strengths and make the decision to go. Now, at that time, it seemed like you're leaving a reasonably good company. Are you sure about that? But you know, again, it comes back to being really honest with yourself. What you really want to achieve. And you take up the ownership to to own up the consequences of that decision. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of uh, fish out of water, um, I recall a lesson from my dad, actually. Uh, uh. Like during the early stages of his career, um, he studied basically accounting. And then he joined the company uh, where he worked as uh, for, for, for 35 years. But at, in, in during the first 10 years, he was doing accounting basically. And he just found that he is not passionate at all about the job. The job oh, becomes um, something that is not fulfilling. Uh, it's like, because the nature of the job as well, it, it requires you to crunch mindless numbers and yeah, work right. long hours. And um, basically, and also somehow the, the environment was also a bit toxic as well. So it was not, uh, basically uh, okay. it's not the right fit for him. Lah. And he just slugged it out for the next 10 years doing that. But by, as towards uh, when he was reaching the, the 10th year of the job, he's, the, the, basically the trigger was that he, he felt that uh, work cannot be this burdensome, you know. So oh, even though he wow. had the good, uh, the good um, let's say pay and the good conditions of a stable job, um, he felt that he's not getting the best out of himself because uh, his progress was also slow. And um, so what he set out to do was that he just planned things out on um, basically back of envelopes and try to see. You. He doesn't necessarily know what uh, he would go into next, but he just knew that something has to change. Mm. So he just um, charted out um, a few op- options basically uh, different departments within the organization that he could transfer or translate to. And then ah. once he did that, um, he, he just, uh, one day he just knocked on the procurement manager, manager's office and just laid out a proposition that, uh, I, if there, is there any vacancy I would like to uh, join your department? Ah. So basically in that sense, 
he knew nothing about procurement at all. Right. And um, and the man- manager obliged and he took him in. And when he arrived in the department, he's like, um, so he doesn't know anything at all about procurement. Around him, there are people who are like high achievers and very experienced. And he thought like, how can I do this basically? So um, right, sometimes, right, right. sometimes situations like this, uh, uh, you uh, think outside of the box, you know. So he sought out like, um, what can I do to be uh, the, let's say, the best in this department? So he sought out new uh. qualifications, which people are not traditionally doing it. So what he he sought out was the e-commerce uh, part. And during the 90s, yeah. e-commerce was not basically uh, uh, yeah, it's yeah. very pioneer. new, right? It's a little yeah. pioneer. So, so mashallah, he, he took the the course of uh, e-commerce and then sought out to implement that in his department. And within a few years, he he, meant, uh, he noticed that his performance and his fulfillment about his job, basically, uh, it was not like the same before that he experienced past 10 years. Suddenly, he feels invigorated. He, he feels mm, refreshed. Mashallah. He feels very motivated. Mashallah. And, and uh, mashallah, uh, the, the, the job that he did... Uh, he got recognized very quickly because um, people are doing traditional things, but he is bringing something that optimizes a lot of uh, uh, the yeah, I've the heard processes. a lot of stories about your dad yeah. uh, from my <laughs> mother. <laughs> he, he found oh, his yeah? sweet oh. spot, right? <laughs> oh, okay. So basically, my, yeah. He so found his sweet spot, spot he right? He found his sweet, sweet spot, basically. But out of uh, the trigger was that he didn't know what his sweet spot, sweet spot was, but he just, right. he just said that... Um, just have the courage to just jump if you don't um, you don't feel fulfilled in your job or you, or you don't feel that you are doing the best thing you know like sometimes mm. we are we are in the trap that oh because this job is comfortable we just stay in it just to earn the paycheck but then mm-hmm. you're not fulfilling your performance uh, you're not doing yourself justice by, by staying in a job that is not uh, fulfilling to you so basically uh, after that um, uh, yeah oh. uh, so procurement was Quite a quite a good thing for him, but then after three years, he actually found his his a better job score. He moved to HR because he he felt that um, his skills actually were more better utilized because he is, oh. he likes to uh, he has better people skills, I guess. Oh. So HR was would be uh, is the best uh, department for him, and then uh, basically in uh, in that sense, jumping from accounting uh, procurement to HR. Um, he wouldn't have thought that he would have made that, those steps, but then um, it's about progress and finding your niche, basically. So, Alhamdulillah, in HR, uh, he he uh, had a good career, I would say. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, basically, that's it. I mean, uh, so the lesson here is uh, knowing the triggers behind uh, what what is not going right for you, or if you feel dragged by your job and being having the courage to just uh, try new things and try to change the situation, you know. So, yeah, so mashallah, it's a really mashallah. good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, of, one of the things I, I really appreciate about that, it's very motivating because for people who feel that they haven't quite found their their their, sweet their spot. calling, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the sweet spot, yeah, right? their sweet calling, spot. yeah, you know, because we tend to over glorify these child prodigies, people who like, oh, they were superstars since they were six years old, yeah, and then they go. And we we don't we don't really acknowledge the late bloomers enough, and mm. stories like this remind us that just because you haven't found your niche, maybe you haven't found it yet. So keep trying. Yep. Yeah. You, you never we know. Have, yeah. We need to have the mindset of greatness in progress, right? Greatness Oy. in progress. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Nice. <laughs> Mashallah. Greatness in progress. Nice. Mashallah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I, I read about this actually uh, in in uh, Good to Great as well. well. Again. Anyway, the book says. <laughs> It's uh, an we, we, we gotta get a copy of that book. Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. They made a very interesting observation. When it comes to technology, it's very rare that the pioneers of that technology are the ones who build long-lasting organizations. Huh, think about that. Very, very true. You know why? Like Kodak, yeah. Ah, exactly like that. Yes. You know what tends to happen? People who become pioneers, uh, be, people who are, are well known for the technology in the long run are not those who found the technology, but they used the technology and made it work and sustained. What happens is when you come up with something, when you're too talented too early on, you tend to be complacent because you think you're only good at that. 
Man, mm-hmm. what happens uh, is some of these companies they become obsolete because they are banking so much on that one technology. When the market conditions have changed, think like blockbuster. You know, like people are not watching video tapes anymore. But they were so stubborn. They didn't want to come on board with the online streaming service. It's not. It's not for us. Mm-hmm. And now they're not, they're obsolete because they felt that this was their baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think yeah. this is very important for us to remember. Number one, uh, keep trying because you may not know where, where your skills, when your skills will come you, because the opportunity hasn't presented itself. And number two, not to get too attached as well because you need to be go. flexible, right? Ah, yeah. flexible. Not yeah, to ge- not to s- s- be. Uh, sh- we should be a generalist and specialist at the same time, right? Ooh, wow. okay, can I say yeah. that? <laughs> because two specialists, you you will just be, caught up in that. Be a jack of all trades. In that cage, yeah. Yeah, you should be like. Okay, I think I'll try to summarize what yeah. Aziz is trying to say. It's like jack of all trades, but be good at those trades. Don't just yeah. be like eh, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah very good. I, and there's one I'm more sure. point that uh, Reza's story was very important. How do you find out the opportunities that you have? Ah, uh, this is very yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. Because people are wondering, okay, I want to choose this career, but I don't even know what's out there. <laughs> to be honest, even I today, this is something that I'm also struggling with. I want to know what options I have out there, and so I just want to ask, what, 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 what do you think about this? What are the best ways to find out what, what choices do you have out there? I have some ideas, me, but I just want to hear from us. Yeah. One of the way, one of the best ways for me uh, personally is to, to do istishara. Istishara is like uh, you sit down with. A bunch of people that are maybe like-minded or maybe your seniors, mm. you know, just 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 tell them, you know, briefly your story. You know what you, what 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 you aspire to be and what and how do you see yourself? Uh, you know uh, what are your skills and what you you are good at and what you are not so good. Uh, what you are not so good at, oh. and you know, and then ask them what why you know bluntly. Uh, uh, for me, I think just ask them bluntly like. You know what? 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 What are the jobs that you think suit me? You know, what are the mm. jobs that suit suit me? And maybe from there you can you can make considerations uh, from the answers they give you. And then you you weigh you weigh you weigh the, the the pros and cons. And if you like it, then maybe you can you can do more research. And then Bismillah, you just uh, you know. And then you do istikhara. Yeah. So istishara and istikhara. Istishara is. To the mushawara, uh, istishara right. is like to Inshallah. seek uh, seek guidance from guidance. The, the elders, mm. yeah. yeah, the, the wise, the so wise like, people, right? It's like what what Aki Faisal mentioned before. The istishara uh, part is like getting feedback from your peers, uh, of course, definitely to know your strengths uh, and all these things, yeah. And not only your colleagues, but uh, I think those who um, you know within your family, even right? Mm. Like right. Ask, ask, ask your parents, ask your parents, or ask your spouses, your spouse. Yep. Oh, your 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 brothers, your sisters, Meh. you know, just Meh. just <laughs> just ask around. And yeah, ask also, istikhara is the most important thing. Yeah, istikhara, yeah, like okay. yeah, just do it. And when you choose, you commit. You commit to do something. You commit to uh, to do something. And just you know, Bismillah. You, you pray istikhara. And if Allah eases your path path towards that that job or that uh, that uh, jawatan or What's jawatan in English again? Position, position yeah. Position. Yeah, we're learning Malay at the same time. So, uh, <laughs> so jawatan, uh, position, yeah. And then, alhamdulillah, I think that's the best for you in that point of time. At that point of time, that's the Very best good. for you that Allah has chosen for you. Yeah. It's also important to have this like learn, learn learner's mindset, yeah. Like, oh yeah, like, so important. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. Yeah, never close your option, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, what I find is the uh, one of practical advice I can give when it comes to finding out your options, which I implement a lot, is this thing called networking. Now, mm. just to mm. disclaimer, I used to really don't like this word networking. I used to think because number one, by nature, I'm an introvert. Sure? And then, uh, Are you sure, sure about that? Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's what I, I get that all the time. But <laughs> but anyway, I used to have this pretty negative impression about this term. I used to think that networking is like you attend these events and every everybody's oh, yeah. like. Like you know, pre- being pretentious, you know, uh, looking smart. And I don't like this like, talking about intellectual discourse. You know, yeah. just to get contacts. I used to hate that. And then you used to build contacts so that you can find out how you can get a job. This is so superficial, man. Like, but in, in practice, so if you feel like that, number one, rejoice. That's not what I mean. <laughs> and number two, yeah, I'm with you. I still don't like that also. <laughs> so, that's not what I mean. 
<laughs> so in, in practice, what networking does, now there are two aspects to this, internal and, and external. And you see, one of the things we don't realize is by you in your current, whatever you're doing right now, just by doing your job well, you're being recognized by people around you within your established contacts and networks. You're building quality networks. Ah, uh, That's important. Uh, yeah. you, 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 you may be sitting beside them, but when they recognize that you can add value, it adds a different layer to the relationship. And when you do that, it opens up opportunities. Ah, oh, this guy, I can rely on him. And something I want to remind, this is uh, what we want to do here is build trust amongst our colleagues. In our company, we have this thing called, uh, we have this cultural belief called nurture trust. And in, in, in the Quran, Allah tells us in Surah Al-Qasas, Inna khaira man istajarta al qawiyul amin. The best person who you can hire is the one who has strength. Now, strength also in some translations, it says capability. So that's number one. And trustworthy, al-amin. So you want to build this relationship amongst the people that you have. And so I find that you do work with well, you get recognized and you communicate with others and you provide constructive feedback. All of this is what constitutes to trustworthiness, somebody that you can rely on. Somebody, you become a good team player, you show authenticity and support if you're a leader. All these things build trust. And one thing I, I, want, I, I learned, one, one interesting life lesson is when you, when you want to build trustworthiness is to stick to your values and principles. You see, yeah, mm, one yeah. of the things I, when I remember in a few years back, I used to have this reputation of being a pretty loud guy. I used to voice out things which, if it doesn't meet standards and principles, but it's what the culture is doing right now. I used to call it out all the time. So bosses used to hate that. So I used to have this pretty, uh, I used to have a, a notorious reputation back then. So when, when that happened, I used to have this subconscious fear that I was going to lose my job. <laughs> Somebody's going to, find problem with me in my performance rating one day, one day. So what I did is I overcompensated for that. So now, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get certifications. I'm going to force myself to learn new things because I don't know when I'm going to leave, right? <laughs> so you, it's interesting. Huh? And, and I used to think like that. But one day, a, a couple of years later, this manager out of nowhere, he told me, he said, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad that this is one-on-one conversation. I'm glad I had this conversation to have this chance to speak to you. You see, I know a lot of bosses... Uh, find you uh, uncomfortable with you, but actually I appreciate what you're doing. So please keep it up. Like, whoa. Oh, <laughs> so much, so I, was, I was building network in a way that I never saw it coming. So yeah, it's interesting. Like inshallah. you think that some, sometimes it's, things are not going well your way, but it's going well in other ways. So all these things, it builds that kind of trust. So your work gets recognized and you build a good reputation. So that's number one internally. But there are also aspects of... Uh, one more thing that I find very interesting when it comes to networking internally is to share knowledge. I think uh, Reza mentioned that again. I think you mentioned that. So when you share knowledge, you build this, uh, this generosity that people want to gravitate towards you. That's what I found. So I used to upload things on, on our intranet about in- initiatives, about tools. And then out of nowhere, it says, that, hey, you're the guy who did this tool, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was quite a... Yeah, that was quite an interesting thing. So that, that, that really motivated me to do more. But let's talk about external networking now. So how you, how you get to know people. So I think one of the things that to, to bear in mind is that when you want to network with people, we should have the intention is to build relationships. We should not have the WIIFM mindset. Have you heard this? WIIFM? Oh, which channel? Oh, which radio channel is that? Yes, no, no, it was W-I-I-F-M. Yeah, 89.9. <laughs> W-I-I-F-M means what's in it for me. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, oh, it's the channel that everyone's, yeah, that FM. The channel that everyone's I, turning to. Why should I right? talk to him, yeah? Ah, uh, right. So that's the thing. When we, when we build networks, we shouldn't have this mindset like, oh, what can I learn? What, what opportunities can I get from this guy? What, you know, what, what can he offer me? We shouldn't have that mindset. We should just build relationships. So I like to remind the hadith the Prophet said that Allah. the Allah. Allah. mixes with people, patient with their harm, is more beloved to Allah and has greater reward than the mu'min who doesn't mix with people and is not patient with their harms. So we, we want to, with this intention, build these relationships. And you'll be surprised. There are so many conversations which lead you to directions which like, oh, I didn't know there was a thing. I didn't, when you talk to people, you build relationships, you realize that, wow, I didn't know that was a career choice at all. <laughs> are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And especially these days, right? This, this digital age, people are coming up with so many creative ways to earn money, right? And you, you think about it, maybe it's not for you today, but a few years down mm-hmm. the road, you realize, that, oh, that's, that's a pretty good opportunity actually. And I think mm-hmm. what Shami mentioned is good. You see, we meet family members all the time, but how, 
how frequently do we sit down and ask them about their, their experiences? We found yeah, out about so. what they are. You see, networking in practice can be as simple as when you meet them for Eid, you say, uh, Uncle, so, yeah, tell me about this job. So you, you just just tell them, try to trigger them. Maybe don't sound so awkward about it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, suddenly, example, yeah. But yeah, yeah, what I is that the, 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 our uncles or our grandfather would, yeah. would love to yeah, I never asked. Story. I was how much how much time you got? Uh, <laughs> how much time you got? <laughs> I can do this all day. <laughs> I can do this all day, right? What's it, I, I, but it's a good I, practice, yeah. yeah. It's a good practice. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. good. Yeah. Mashallah. Yeah. No, like for example, I, I have I have an uncle who works in R and D in the automotive DC, the division. So one of the things that always comes to mind, if you want to start conversations, start with questions which are like, sounds so ridiculous, but it starts conversation. So like, oh, you're in R&D. Uncle, do you research cars that can fly? <laughs> Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, <laughs> then they have a good laugh about it. And then the conversation starts. It's a and good icebreaker. Huh? Yeah, good icebreaker. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And what I found that even in practice, the people that you meet in the organization, even if it's in the same department, you'll be surprised at how different their job is, even though they're sitting mm-hmm. next to you. And then you realize yeah. that, oh, wow. And then you might realize that that's for you. So, right. yeah, I just find that it's very interesting. There are so many ways you can network and you don't have to make it awkward. <laughs> right, Stop. right, right, right. Is this but, being genuine when you, uh, let's say, build relationships basically? Because yeah. some people have the the mindset that, oh, like what you said, what's in it for me, you know? That's right. why, <laughs> that's what, one of the things that might make us uh, not, like uh, networking basically uh, usually mm, yeah but actually it's about yeah like uh, if i said is building relationships building uh being genuine knowing the people around you and it's just um let's say uh in regards especially to even your family members it's uh strengthening the family ties as well you know so it's it's all exactly mashallah brilliant yeah being genuine yeah yeah, yeah. wow mashallah yeah. I want two birds with one stone. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And one thing. of the things I wanted to share as well is when it comes to let's talk a bit about reality check. I think I may have highlighted this. So one of the things I found is that one of the, I, I would advise everyone is when it comes to career choices, take your time. You don't have to yeah. rush things. Don't get into this rat race of peer pressure. I, I used to feel this. I used to see like my juniors in university. They are now managers. They are they are, they are faster than me. Yeah. It used to kind of yeah, you feel that too, right, Aziz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you feel, I feel like, oh man, what, what, am I, what am I doing? Don't feel like that. Like people have to move at their own yeah. pace. You you develop mm. as long as you're learning, as long as you're fulfilling something, you find passion in what you do, it's okay. It, yeah. To theirs is their own risk. And to you is to you Shall your what? own risk. Yeah, so it's so important yeah, because yeah. one of the things I realized is that uh you see, for example, I was actually I was a junior engineer for a long time. I was struggling to get across to that barrier of a senior engineer. And once I finally got it, I was like, yes! It took me so much longer than the average guy. I think it took me seven years to reach that stage. So which in, in our organization, that's, that's pretty long. But the second I got that re- response, uh, that, that, that promotion, I have to now supervise junior engineers. Yeah. I have to check their work. I have to sign their stuff. And I realized that, wow, if I didn't take my time to do this grant work, I wouldn't be mm. a very good supervisor. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. That's right. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Very that's true. true yeah. And then I, I look back now, to be honest with you, I don't want to name any names, but when I compare myself with some of my peers or my juniors who are now managers, they're struggling actually. Because now they have to mm. make decisions and they didn't take the time to mature the, the work process behind it. They don't know the tricks of the trade. <laughs> you know I mean? Mashallah, yeah. yeah. I always, always wonder how, how can they fast forward their, <laughs> their way to to that level. Yeah, that mm. used to bother me a lot. Like, how can I like go faster? Ah, these shackles are holding me back. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but but to take your time, there's so much benefit from it. And mm. I like to remind yeah, myself, which from the da'wah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, he, when he was doing Hajj, I believe the figure was a few hundred thousand Sahaba, was it? A hundred thousand plus doing Hajj with him? If I'm Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah about that. It was about a six-digit figure, right? But mm. how many f- followers did he have when he made hijrah from Makkah to Medina? Mm. Mm. Think about it. Mashallah. I don't I don't know the exact numbers, but from my memory, if if it if I'm if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, it's less than a hundred. 
maybe less than 200. That's it. In a span of 13 years, the followers was only few, not so much. Masha, but when, yes. after Hijrah, rapid, and even after Hijrah, it took some time. It's only after the conquest of Mecca, immediately rapid succession. So stories like mm -hmm. this, how I apply it in my life is to remind ourselves, it's not about going fast. Sometimes there's a point in life, you, maybe you haven't reached that point yet. You might reach that point and boom, right? you, get, you will yeah. explode. <laughs> Greatness so always, in progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greatness in progress, right? <laughs> it's, not, it's not as a pride thing, but it's to motivate yeah. ourselves to be grounded on where we are and don't, don't feel demotivated about the things that are happening around you. You move at your own pace. You be yourself. There are things that about you, maybe you don't know yet. Maybe they're along the lines you will discover about you. You don't know yet. So yeah, that's how I remind myself. <laughs> Inshallah. So basically, uh, this, this is like trusting the process basically and no matter sometimes you feel that you're not in the right place as long as you're learning um, you know that uh, where you are at the moment is part of the qadr and you are supposed to be there and basically um, don't let like uh, Aki Faisal mentioned don't rush things put everything in, in its perspective and just go with the process you know and as long as you're developing yourself you're con continually growing uh, inshallah, uh, you'll see the fruits in the future. Yeah, that's right. Mashallah. Really. So one, one of the things I, I also want to remind us is that, you know, all of us, we, we also do things outside of our office as well. So we go to classes, we seek knowledge, and we can build a lot of fantastic network of friends when just by getting to know each other. And I realize that sometimes we don't do this. We come to classes, we learn, we go home. So one of the things I try to plan the, the additional intention is I want to build a relationship with the people that I don't know who I'm going to meet. And by the way, all of us here, Baraka Effect, right? We, we didn't come, we didn't go to the same school. We didn't go to the same university. We don't even work in the same company. How do we know each other? It's through this, through seeking knowledge. Inshallah. Right? Think about it. Oh, right? Okay, maybe yeah. Aziz and Reza, you're the exception, right? You. <laughs> 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 but all of us, I knew Shahmi through meeting him in a class and, uh, and I didn't know what was our, our, what, what I can get from that relationship or what they can get from it or what I can offer from it. Uh, that's another thing as well. When you, when you form relationships, have that near to think about how can I help this person? How can I add uh -huh. value? Maybe I know person that I, people that can help this person even if I can't help them. So that can also yeah, help yeah, you be yeah. more intentional in your networking. But subhanAllah, I mean, I had no idea we can do something like this together, right? Like we just met yeah, each other. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I love it, mashallah. And then just last but not least, it's a small topic now about managing fear. I realized that fear is something that's such a big thing when it comes to career choices. Sometimes we fear taking a step because we think that, oh, I don't know, people are going to criticize me. Oh, I don't know, I might not be good at this. Yep. Uh, even when it comes to asking for help, oh, subhanAllah. Sometimes we, we just want to ask for some career advice or some feedback. Oh, feedback. Oh, there's so much mm. faith asking for feedback, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you have to... And you see, the thing is, I, I remind myself a, a quote from, uh, I believe it's Nelson Mandela, who said that courage is not the absence of fear. It's to triumph over fear. You might feel that fear. Sure, you, you, are, you fear asking for feedback but still you do it anyway. So I think that's very, very important. And for example, if you see an opportunity and you, you fear certain consequences, there are things that you have to manage. And it's interesting, like when, when I always think about people who start businesses, when they stop their career and they start their business, that takes a lot of courage. And I actually recently heard this in a the podcast discussion about starting business. People think that starting businesses is about, oh, just leaving everything behind, right? Put, put two feet down and just go, like fully committed. But in reality, a lot of successful businesses, they're not that kind of gung-ho cowboy people. They do a lot of work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. yep. While they are working, they build their capital, they learn their, their mm -hmm. skills, what they need to do, they get the networks. And then when they are comfortable, then they proceed. They manage their fear. That's very important to note. So I think there's an important choice for us to, decision to us to do, to manage that fear, not to allow it from crippling ourselves from learning and progressing in our lives. Yeah, mashallah. Let's leave it. Okay, so okay. I think inshallah, we want to put some closing remarks on this. So brothers, maybe you'd like to go around, maybe brother Reza, maybe some closing remarks for our discussion on charting your career path. 
Okay. Uh, so just to conclude everything, uh, I'd like to draw to um, the story of one of the Sahaba um, who basically ep- epitomizes what we have been discussing today, not in the sense of a career, but in the sense of finding his true calling. So uh, the Sahaba goes by the name of uh, Zaid ibn Thabit. So, um, so he had a very a high aspiration to help, to want to help the deen of Allah. Um, and so during the, the battle of Badr, he was still a young boy, maybe 13 years old. And oh. he came up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and mentioned that uh, I'm here Rasulullah, uh, I want to help your deen. Uh, please let me join the battle. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, recognized that he, he's being a young boy. He said, maybe you're not uh, so... Uh, ready yet for the for the to join the major battles and he was so disappointed by that fact that he went back and he, w- he felt so down but at the same time um he he had a mentor which was his his mother who saw that he is very prolific in the academic or um let's say in the sciences of the quran for example or or having a good intellect basically right. so his his mother um, saw this in him and as a mentor oh. she approached rasulullah sallam after that and mentioned that oh here his uh, zaid he has quite unique abilities that uh, i we think that uh, will help your religion greatly uh, help the cause of allah greatly so rasulullah sallam recognized that and um, upon seeing his ability assigned him to learn um, languages such as Hebrew and Syriac. So he became the personal scribe and personal translator uh, for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And at that point, he was still just like uh, learning basically. So he didn't actually intend to go into uh, that area uh, initially, but then using his strengths and his... Um, uh abilities uh basically he he had uh he developed in that area and then he became quite an important uh part of um being collecting knowledge basically so as he went along um uh, he became an in- integral part of uh rasulullah uh the da'wah uh and his let's say the biggest contribution that he made was uh, after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had passed away in the sense that after the battle of uh, uh, when a lot of the memorizer of the Quran uh, passed away in the battle of uh, the apostates, um, then there was a need... This was during the Caliphate of Abu Bakr, Caliphate, isn't it? Yeah, Caliphate of Abu Bakr. So there was a need to uh, collect the, the Quran basically because... Um, they they felt that uh, it's getting, uh, you know, they had to preserve it basically. So having all those skills before, he was tasked with the great um, the great uh, job to uh, basically compile the Quran and uh, basically, uh, let's say he was recognized as one of the seniors of the Sahaba to uh, lead that project. So basically. Uh, if you look into that whole career path or his life story, uh, for example, it's the epitome of finding your niche and going to where your qualities are best utilized. And uh, in the end, he gave back in a way that benefited the ummah until uh, until now even, you know. So, mashallah, this is uh, quite a, a great summary, I would say, of... Uh, Knowing your strengths, developing yourself, and giving back uh, to the ummah. Uh, so that's uh, basically a summary conclusion, I, I would say, which uh, is quite links everything quite well. In, uh, what we discussed today. So, yeah. Subhanallah. Mm. Yeah. You know, you brought a very interesting subtopic as well. Is that to have a mentor that recognizes your skill and to develop mm. that, to nurture that. That's very important. Yeah. So that in that case, in the case of Zaid, it was his mom, wasn't it? Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. So that's a very good point. Number one is to find people who can identify your core strengths and bring it out from you. And for us, if we have juniors, children, subordinates, try to identify what they are good at. 
So maybe maybe they they, they are not aware actually. Maybe they're not. Mm. So like Zaid, yeah. he wanted to participate in war. He thought that this is how he wanted to contribute. But turns out that he was excellent in something yes. else. Yes, mashallah. Oh, mashallah, amazing. Yeah, I would like to amazing. to conclude. Yes. Yeah. I would I would I would you would be best if we have a career path right as early as high school or before we left school right. Mm. And maybe we will we will help us to decide which field we want to be. Would it be engineering, business, or what, whatever field? But if we if we don't have any roadmap roadmap yet, uh, it's never too late to have one. Find your sweet ah. sweet spot. Be in progress. As for me, okay. I'm I'm an engineer right now, planning engineer. Some part of me I hate engineering. I hate engineering. But oh. some <laughs> part of me I love doing the planning and keep the ah. project going. Mm. And I would have this last point. I think it's very important. If the roadmap roadmap to climb the 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 ladder doesn't go our way, know that our time will come. That uh, I heard so many times that my colleagues complain uh, that their boss are the cause of the delay to move forward to a high position. But okay. we have to understand that sometimes there are things we do not see. Right? Yeah. Maybe there are potential harm if we get. Things in our hand so early. So early, yeah. 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 For example, would you give a two years old child a, a knife? <laughs> no, right? <laughs> yeah. It may be it may be useful. True, true, true. It may it's be useful example, for the child yeah. to cut a, an 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 apple, but it may cause harm for the child. Yeah. Mm. We see a lot of young people who who we know that get promoted to be a manager or supervisor supervisor, then they destroy the careers of others. The subordinate because they are not ready to be a leader. Mm. Wow! How many? Yeah, I, I've seen this yeah, yeah, in yeah. my yeah ten years of working experience. They don't wow. they don't have a clue how to manage the people so and how to inspire for productivity. But we have to know that sometimes being delayed is a blessing, and yes, we have room for improvement. And I would like to say, have this greatness in progress mindset. Mashallah, Mashallah, Great point. Very well said. Yeah, that's all for me. Yeah, very good. Zakla Khairan. Okay, brother Shami, Inshallah. Uh, okay. Um, so I'd like to uh just to add to the uh, to to everything that has been said, Mashallah, by the brothers. Um, one of the one of the things that we may, um. Have uh, have put under the radar that we we uh, uh, something that went unnoticed is that being a student as well, it's also a profession in and of itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh. because uh, we've been talking about those who are in the uh, the corporate field and or in the engineering field or the medic medical line, right? So um, if you are a student, if you are a student, there are There, there are uh, a certain roadmap that has been that has been drawn by the scholars. Oh, so like syllabus. Yeah, the syllabus and, and right. whatnot. And right, of right. course, it may differ from from one from one uh, uh, scholar scholar to another, depending on depending on the uh, the program that you undertake. Mm, okay, sure. for instance, for instance, uh, someone who might be in In the medical line, they might have a different, different way of uh, different khutta uh, in the Arabic word is khutta or roadmap that they need to follow and they need to yeah like textbook sure. A, textbook B, textbook mm-hmm. C. Mm-hmm. Of course, of course, yeah. Right. And also, uh, in the religion, the student of the the student of knowledge, as we call it in Arabic, talibul uh, ilm, they also need to follow a certain roadmap. So. Uh, I'm gonna speak on that. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on some points uh, because uh, simply because it's it's uh, something that is uh, dear and close to my heart, and also I uh, I also have heard about this fa- uh, many times from the scholars. So and also f- from our asatida or our our ustaz. So what they say is that number one, you need to purify your intention, and this I think this message can. It's not only for those who seek uh, seek knowledge, but also for 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 those who are already in 
you know, big companies working as an engineer or working as managers, right? You need to pure, purify your intentions. Like if, uh, with that, you know, you can, you can see clearly, you can see clearly and you will not be blinded by all the materialism that, you know, your, 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 your colleagues might, um, blind you with, you know, I, I bought, I bought, I recently bought a PS5. No way. I want, I want the PS5 as well, you know? So, so, yeah. Okay. All right. You do right, right. I see your intention. Uh, pardon? Uh, pardon? Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, easy yeah. to get swept into that red race thing. Oh, me too. I want to get one as well. Yeah. The, all the fuss now is about PS5. I don't know. I, it's, it's on Instagram. All, all, all the talk about uh, is PS5. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, number one is purifying your intention because they say the scholars say that if you don't have uh, and uh, if you don't have a pure heart, it's like how would you pour water inside uh, into 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 a into a into a dirty glass, right? You won't have right. a pure water wow, to drink. Subhanallah. Yeah. Mm. So you purify your intention. Second of all, you need to take baby steps and actually plant your feet in the things that. Are considered foundation in the things that you are about to embark on. For for example, in in the religion, if you want to learn fiqh, fiqh is a uh, jurisprudence or uh, you know the basic things. How do you make wudu? How do you how do you actually do your salah and stuff like that? Don't don't jump straight away to like books such as Bidayatul Mujtahid. Bidayatul Mujtahid are of course our mukarrar or our textbook that we hear in uh, the Islamic University of Madina. And we learned that book. So actually, if you take a close look at the the, the term, Bidayatul Mujtahid means the the, the, the starting. Uh, it is it, it's actually a guide. It's actually a guide for how the the people who are already master their madhab, a certain madhab, to actually embark on the journey to become the Mujtahid. The Mujtahid oh, is to give ishtihad. To, to uh. give ishtihad and also those who um, has uh, pa, uh, has uh, mastered all the Islamic sciences, not only fiqh, but hadith, right. but tafsir, but the lugha and stuff like that. So, subhanAllah, if you want to jump straight away onto that, subhanAllah, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really not befitting. So, if you are a Shafi'i, start, start small, like uh, Safina Tun Naja, or uh, these, are, these, are, these are all the books. The basic ones. The yeah. basic books, yeah, the basic books. And uh, of course, in other fields as well, not only in 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 science, in in the studying the Sharia, right? Uh, you 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 all have the manuals and the textbook, like Brother Faisal said. Uh, you have textbook one, textbook two, and uh, and etc. Okay, that's number two, and number three, number three, um, uh, listen to the scholars, like listen to the, the the those who are senior, more senior than you are, and those who are wise. You know, because their words they might be small and concise, but they bring weight. They bring weight, and they are they are really you need you need to take a look in into you need to consider these uh, these advices that they, they have been give, uh, that that they give. And also number four, and finally, inshallah, um, you know, uh, have a plan. Uh, have a plan, and after you have achieved some sort of a uh, basic, and you have grounded yourself in the foundation you need to you need to ask yourself where do you want to you where, where do you want to go next okay in 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 speaking about uh in 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 the in the lenses of a student of knowledge you might want to go to uh the path of ahlul hadith those who you know busy themselves with the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and yeah and also, you might want to go to uh, the, the path of the fuqaha or those who uh, master the jurisprudence of, uh, of of the Sharia. You know, you ask yourself, and you see, and and here comes uh, the, the the three things, right? The the, the three main compartments that uh, the brother Faisal has said before, like your passion. Where's your passion, and what what skills that you you have and that you master, and also what's the other one? I forgot. Uh, I forgot what brother Faisal said. The value but, uh, where you can add yeah, value. Yeah, value, yes. Definitely. Mm. Like, how do you contribute, right? How do you, how can you contribute and how would the, that feel can contribute to you, like, as a person? How can it up- uplift you? So, um, yeah, I think those are the basic things that uh, we can consider. And, inshallah, it does not only 
uh, those those advices are not only for the students of knowledge, but also for the general masses as well. Wallahu alam. Mashallah, very good, very good. Barakallahu feek. Okay, uh, brother Amir. Okay, all right. So uh, I'll keep it short. Yeah. So uh, have the correct intention. Yeah. Uh, before uh, the reason why you work. Yeah. You can have multiple intention, but make sure the the primary main intention is to seek Allah's pleasure. Yeah. And whatever intention comes in next. Before make, commit, before making a decision, make sure you do all the due diligence. Yeah, consider all angles from an honest point of view. Take take feedback. Yeah, uh, mm. and then once you have a, a, a firm plan, yeah, there's all, there's always a room for uncertainties. And that room uncertainties, you make dua to Allah, you put your trust in Allah, you always have good faith in Allah, and you accept whatever consequence comes from it. Yeah, and uh, when you have that this plan, yeah, the plan should be something firm that you can commit, but it should be flexible enough. That you can embrace it, you can cherish oh. it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. And end of the day, we are as human, we make plans, but Allah is the best of planner. That's so all I have. Yeah. No, no. Mashallah, very good, very good reminder. Very good. So I just want to close out last but not least. So uh, you see, the thing about career choices, what you do, it's an iterative process. So even when it comes to, for example, the example that Reza gave, I really like the example of your dad. So you might look back and say that, well, he made a lot of good career choices. But in reality, back then he's like, I'm just going to try it, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what I'll get from yes. it. <laughs> so I, I, I learned this from a different podcast about career choices. We always look at CEOs and we say, wow, this guy made, they were in the right place at the right time. But when they, at that time, they were like, I'm just, I don't know, I'll just give, give it a try. I'll, I'll see where it goes. <laughs> so yeah. much, Allah, yeah. It was good for them. So wherever you are now, make the best from it. That's the important mm-hmm. point. Be thankful that you you have an opportunity. Learn, keep developing yourself and not just limit yourself to the learning within that position or the organization, whatever you're doing. Also learn from other things as well. Don't, don't, don't waste that opportunity. Those after hours seeking knowledge, it's very, very important to keep yourself improving on those fundamentals. So I was, one of the things I just wanted to close was that See, every human being is different. All of us have different skills and different strengths. And even within those skills and strengths, there are nuances of what we're good at and what we're not so good at. So one of the things I'd like to remind myself is even the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. See, when we speak about companions, people tend to have this mindset that they are all this kind of specific kind of character, you know? But in reality, they were all very, very different. Even their strengths, their skills were very, very varied. We, now, of course, Khulafa al Rashidin, they were a different beat. They, they were like, oh, they were, what's the term for it? Renaissance men? Like, they were they were great in many, many different things. Cream right, of the crop. Right, right. Yeah, cream of the crop. Oh, there's a term for it. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, they were, they were good in many, many things. Uh, but the companions, the other companions, they, they had their own niche. So some of them, they were they were good at business and they their niche was they could spend for the path of Allah. Companions like Abdurrahman bin Auf. You don't hear them. You don't hear Abdurrahman bin Auf being a scholar. And then some of them, they were great at the battlefield. So like Abu Dujana. You only hear the name Abu Dujana during wars. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. that was his niche. That's where he can contribute. Yeah. And then you have somebody like Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar was a righteous man. But when he sought to be a leader, the Prophet mm. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you're, you're weak. You're not competent for this job. And it's not, it's not an insult to him. That's not, it's just not yeah. suitable for him. And mm-hmm. there's some companions were the opposite. They may not be super knowledgeable, but they had brilliant leadership characteristics like Amr ibn As. The very immediate, almost immediately he became Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ gave him a leadership task because that was his niche. Not, not all of us were born to be leading big organizations, big teams and so on. We have to recognize those strengths and those shortcomings. Some of them were very skillful in memorization. So they stayed with the Prophet ﷺ, like Abu Hurairah. Yeah. So during the Prophet Sallallahu lifetime, he gave up everything. He lived as a, what's the term for it? The, the one that's... Ahlusufa. Ahlusufa, naam. So he used to stay at the masjid, used to live a very simple life. Why? Because he wanted to dedicate himself to learning. But after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi passed away, he was a governor. He had a normal life like everyone else. So and because he want, his niche was, he wanted to memorize as much hadith as possible while the Prophet Sallallahu mm-hmm. was alive. And then I want to dedicate my life to conveying that to others. But interestingly, not necessarily as a faqih, as somebody who understands sharia as a whole, but as a transmitter of hadith. That's very yeah. interesting. Inshallah. A very, very interesting perspective. Inshallah. So even yes, within, yes. within that special, even specialty, there's a special sub-specialty within that as well. <laughs> yeah, so Inshallah. Inshallah. I, remember, I remember one of the sheikhs, they said, 
not all you have this perception that, that the companions are all mujtahid like they they are all great minded they, they they can they know the 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 uh, you know the in and outs of uh, sharia the but dinia. that's not the reality that's not the reality ah. the, the, the those who are mujtahid there are a few and all the others they are just uh, you know considered as laymen laymen for example that ah. between that Bedouin guy who went into the masjid and you know he peed in the masjid. Like he's, there, yeah. yeah, he's he's a companion, but, but yeah, that's true. No, yeah, 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 he's yeah. a layman, <laughs> and you don't even know his name, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and then and a lot more, many more, many more yeah, examples. Subhanallah. And then, you know, it's interesting when you look at the sirah of the companions when they know they had specialists in the field, they were like, okay, I'll pass it to them. So when you yeah. look at some of the early companions, you know, they would have memor- more, learned more hadith than the later companions yet when they knew their later companions were more skilled in transmitting hadith, we'll leave it to them. Yeah. I'm not going to mm-hmm. delve in this field. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something very motivating for me. Like if I'm not, I know I'm not good at this, it's okay. Leave it behind. There are other things which maybe I can be good at. So that's very, very important. Subhanallah. And yeah, and even the women as well. The women companions, they were all very, very different in skills. And subhanAllah, if you look at the, the, all of them, it's motivating to learn that even our wives, they can have things which they can specialize in, they can be good at. And subhanAllah, we need more women scholars we need more women on the field to contribute to the ummah and so it's not it's not just limited to the men and i find mm. this at the end of the day you wrap up all these conclusions it shows that they are all very different but at the, at, at the end of the day they were all righteous companions who the who allah promised them the highest levels of paradise yeah, and in that same way we can also aspire to those heights inshallah inshallah, so, inshallah. great point whatever great point. skills that we have whatever weak weaknesses we have inshallah we, we still have the opportunity to be with them if we follow in their footsteps in terms of their good deeds. Allah Allah. Allah. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, it was a very good discussion. Uh, so we will end here inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu ala ila ila anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Don't forget to hit the like button. Please do check more of our episode in the channel as well. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.